Good morning, everyone. My name is Walt Miner. I'm the AGL Community Manager. I'm here to give the, a talk on the automotive grade Linux roadmap and UCB update, unified code base update. So my Twitter handle here is I'm at VSTAR Walt. And my email address here is if you have any questions later, you can drop me an email uh, at wminer at linuxfoundation.org. So who is this guy? Why is he talking to me? Um, I've been a Linux Foundation employee for seven years. And in those seven years, I've been the community manager and development manager for automotive grade Linux that entire time. Um, previously, I was at Monta Vista and Mentor Graphics doing automotive Linux there. Um, I started the open source review board and delivered some Linux products to Mercedes-Benz when I was at Continental. Um, prior to that, starting in 2005, I was working with uh, Motorola mobile devices on the Linux Java phones that were done. Back in those days, I was the software architect manager of uh, software architecture and systems engineering. And then prior to that, I also was at Motorola's telematics group working on automotive projects there. Um, so I've got quite a few years of experience here, both at the Linux Foundation and then Linux in general. Um, it's been almost uh, two years of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And so for those of you who, who know me, I've worked, I've lived in Chicago until very recently. I moved to uh, Asheville, North Carolina in July. So no more, hopefully no more freezing Chicago winters. And I also enjoy riding my uh, motorcycle. I've done quite a few motorcycle rides. This was a recent photo at the uh, world famous Tale of the Dragon, which is about an hour from my house here. So that's an introduction to who I am. Now let's talk about AGL and the unified code base. So in AGL has been around since 2012. Uh, I joined AGL in uh, 2014. And in 2016, we announced the first release of the unified code base, the AGL unified code base. Up until then, we'd been releasing software, but kind of building on top of Tizen IVI, um, and that was more or less abandoned. And we decided, our steering committee decided that we would create the unified code base from what was out there in Tizen IVI, in Genevi, in uh, Yocto Open Embedded, and whatever code AGL created to form this unified code base. And that first release was done in January of 2016. We showed some demos at CES. That was our, I think it was our first CES. Um, and we you know, that release was the Agile Albacore release. So if you're familiar with our naming convention of naming our releases after fish, um, we're now 12 major releases later. Um, and we're still unifying, but now the best of open source, because if you think about Tizen IVI doesn't exist anymore, Genevi doesn't exist anymore. They've re, uh, reframed themselves as something else. And, but, and really op uh, open source has evolved quite a bit in the last seven years. Um, system D, if you think about seven years ago, system D was in its infa in infancy. There were still a lot of flame wars out there on the mailing lists about whether system D was going to be used by people. Oh, it's just overkill. Nobody needs it. Well, that's all gone away. You know, system D is a, it's an accepted part of the Linux ecosystem. Now Pipewire didn't exist. Um, we were, you know, the web app manager was the, which we, which we've um, gotten upstream from WebOS. They really hadn't open sourced their stuff at this, but at that point, Flutter didn't exist. Jenkins was around, obviously, and we've also since then built a lot of AGL services and AGL reference apps uh, based on an AGL application framework that we created along the way. So. 12 releases later, we're still doing this. Uh, we're still focusing on reducing fragmentation, focusing on innovation and new features, but also production readiness. 
Uh, we are now available in Toyota and Subaru vehicles in production. And we have a, an IVI expert group that is being led by Toyota and has production ready in its name. So that team is definitely focusing on making AGL available in the car of the future. So having said that, 2022 and 2021 and 2022 especially will be a year of transformation for AGL. Like I said, we're continuing to look at what's out there in the open source and, and community and the AGL steering committee, which meets about once a month, um, actively prioritizes uh, what projects we're going, you know, we're going to spend AGL funding on to de for development. And um, they came up earlier this year with this list of uh, projects to prioritize. So high on the list or tops on the list was uh, Flutter for the IVI expert group, uh, virtualization, including Vert.io and creating a common device interface. Um, we have reference hardware that's been designed by our reference hardware expert group and is available for purchase from uh, Panasonic, uh, but continuing to advance that reference hardware and continuing to advance the instrument cluster and making it more production ready. Um, evolving our app framework uh, to use more upstream components rather than AGL uh, managing a... Uh, its own app for creating and maintaining its own app framework. So making more use of system D and changing our Linux security module. I'll talk about that in a second. Again, more IVI features and vehicle to cloud. Um, it's coming vehicle to cloud is as, as connectivity and 5G become ubiquitous, uh, more and more vehicles will be connecting to the car on a regular, connecting to the cloud on a regular basis. So <clears throat> working on our vehicle to cloud expert group has some demos in progress and you'll see those in the next uh, few days and uh, working on identity management and some telematics demos. So um, what's that transformation going to look like? So over the past six years, we have, AGL has invested in software components that are not available anywhere else. Um, that included a, a, our, an app framework. And, you know, with audio at first, it included the uh, AGL Advanced Audio Agent or 4A in order to meet some of the requirements that we had that were not being met by um, the existing audio packages that were out there. And um, so you can see here in green, this is the evolution. So this here, this, this column is where we are today, where we were a year or two ago with Qt and 4A and Smack for security, uh, using IVI shell for UI management and only having an IVI profile. Well, <clears throat> by the end of 2022, we'll have Flutter, uh, we'll, Flutter and web app web apps available, reference apps available. We already have some reference web apps that are available. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be deprecating our AGL application framework, making use of better, you know, better and more upstream components like system D. Um, we have deprecated our 4A and stopped maintaining that. And we're now using Pipewire. We have some great collaboration between the AGL community and the Pipewire community to try to drive those automotive specific use cases into Pipewire. And now you see Pipewire being used not only in automotive, but also being shipped in Fedora as their default audio package. So it's making it's making strides both in the embedded and in the desktop space. Um, in the meantime, in the last two years, we were using Smack for our security. Really Smack has fallen by the wayside. So we'll be moving to SE Linux and or App Armor for security. UI management, we're using IVI shell, which was created by uh, Adit. Um, now we've created an AGL compositor that we've been uh, maintaining for a few years that, all, again, it manages our AGL specific use cases and is based on Wayland. Um, we work closely with the Wayland community through Collabra to make sure that our features are maintained there and to make sure that what we're doing is in sync with that community. 
And we've expanded our profiles from just the initial IVI profile to uh, IVI, instrument cluster, telematics, and eventually ADAS. So 2022, we'll continue, to, we'll continue to evaluate open source technologies to find best in class for automotive use cases. And in particular, we'll be, we'll be transitioning away, we'll be transitioning our AGL reference apps and away from service, our, the existing service binders that we have in the AGL app framework to newer technologies. Um, and we're, those forced, those technologies forced WebSockets on us to, you know, on a web one size fits all basis. Um, in some cases, there's newer versions of IPCs available like gRPC that we'll make use of. Um, and we'll be replacing our existing set of cute reference apps with Flutter and web apps as we go through 2023. So you'll see a great transformation and I'll detail that in the next, uh, next few minutes over the course of 2022. So let's talk a little bit about release planning. Where, where do we stand? In 2021, we released the initial version of uh, version 11, Kuki Koi, and the initial version of Lucky Lamprey, which was 12.0. And we have started working on uh, Magic Marlin, our next release, which will be released in early 2022. And through next year, you'll see us develop a nifty needlefish and release that in July as release 14 and then preparing for optimistic octopus, um, in early, uh, 2023. Now, um, I put on here the, uh, Yocto project releases that we'll be using. So we've been using the Yocto project LTS version, uh, 3.1 code, also code named Dunfell. Uh, for the last few years, and they initially promised us, they initially promised two years of support. And we'll continue to uh, support Dunfell. They will be extending that two years out to four years, they announced, recently announced. But they will also be creating uh, version 3.5, Kirkstone, which will be the new Yocto LTS being released uh, in the spring of this year, of 2022. And what we will be doing is moving from Dunfell to Kirkstone in the uh, Needlefish release in time for July. And then basically uh, continuing to use that on our master branch for the next few years. But we made the decision that Lucky Lamprey, which is uh, version 12, um, we will continue to support Dunfell updates for at least through the end of 2022, and I am anticipating through the life the lifespan of Dunfell. Um, so I know there's people out there who are still using Kuki Koi. Um, we probably will stop um, supporting that version. Lamprey and Koi are very identical in terms of APIs and what's available in them. So uh, we will continue to support Dunfell updates through 2022 um, with uh, in Lucky Lamprey. But the idea is that, uh, so these this right now is the initial schedule based on the um, schedule that I have from the Yocto project at least through 3.1.16, um, I believe, 15 or 16 through April. But as they continue to announce new releases, we will add patch releases to this Lamprey schedule. And Marlin, we anticipate, Marlin is more, I, I kind of view as more of a transition release. Like I said, 2022 will be a year of transition. Uh, we'll continue with Dunfell, but we already made the decision to remove the AGL app framework um, and replace it with more upstream components. So for those of you that are, have legacy AGL apps that you want to continue supporting using the app framework and using what we have today, you can do that with Lucky Lamprey. Um, as 
Marlin and the new AGL app framework and Flutter and other things continue to mature, you can make the decision when it's appropriate for you to switch over to that newer version, whether it's Marlin or Needlefish or Octopus or whatever. Um, so we'll continue with Dunfell because it's what's available, but we are replacing, we are removing the AGL app framework. And we anticipate that the existing Qt demo apps may be less functional um, than Lamprey because we have to replace those service binders that were in there in the existing uh, service layers that we have, service binders that we have. So we will, you know, the demo apps, the cute demo apps may be less functional. We are in the process, Egalia is in the process of making web app, the web app manager and Chromium functional with the new app framework. Um, Toyota is working on getting the flutter and better into our code. We have the first commits from them. We should have a build from them. I'm recording this uh, December 5th. We should have a build sometime this week with those with the Flutter and Better and maybe the initial launcher and home screen. We'll continue to get some more pipe wire and wire plumber updates that are coming. And Instrument Cluster will have their multi-container solution available, their new sound manager that they've worked on with Calabra and the uh, Instrument Cluster service framework that they're planning on using. So again, that will come out. Magic Marlin will be released. Uh, the plan is uh, February 18th. The M1, the first milestone, will be uh, next week, as you're seeing this, uh, the week of December 20, on, on December 21st. <clears throat> and then Marlin, as we go through next year, we plan a release about every two months. Um, and probably uh, maybe a little later, maybe even past 1304. Then as we go into the middle of next year, we are working on Nifty Needlefish. So we will be uh, switching to the Kirkstone branch of the Yocto project, version 3.5. Uh, we get we pick up a ton of additional features from Yocto, the, including uh, the read-only PR server, which was funded by AGL and the work was done by Paul Barker and Scott Murray. Um, hash equivalency, again, some of that work was done with uh, AGL uh, Kubernetes, K3S, the public state cache, uh, software bill of materials will be available and basically all around faster builds compared to what we have today. So um, we're really excited about pulling in Kirkstone and some of these features, especially for our CI team and our uh, automated test side. Um, the app framework and IPC will continue to evolve and be ready for new reference apps uh, on the uh, WAM side, in, especially on the WAM side, but hopefully on the Flutter side as well in the Needlefish release in July. Um, Web App Manager will be updating to a Qtless version of Web App Manager. So we are hoping to remove all of our Qt dependencies, both in the apps and in the app framework in the Needlefish release. Um, can't completely commit to that yet, but I think we are we will be there in Needlefish. We'll have an update to uh, one of the Ni Chromium 90 versions, 9X versions. Um, Egalia tells me that once we outdo this version to the Qtless version of WAM and do some of the other, pull some of the other upstream changes from WebOSE, that the Chromium updates will become much easier and we'll be able to keep up with the Chromium releases much, much faster and much better than we have in the past. And we will have, we plan on having SE Linux available in permissive mode. So at least as a as a test that we can have SE Linux and have it available in permissive mode, we'll make that available in Needlefish. Excuse me. So <clears throat> schedule wise, um, the milestone one will be at the end of May and the final release of Needlefish will be in uh, the end of July. 
Um, typically, I try to make the schedule so that we're not doing any releases in the August time frame, so that understanding that people usually schedule vacations in late July and August, <clears throat> so people can uh, can do that without a problem. We'll have needlefish patch releases throughout the, throughout the end of uh, the second half of last next year, and we will start working on the optimistic octopus release. So that is scheduled for February of 2023. Um, that again, we will continue to use Kirkstone. We will continue through the year to make lamprey releases based on Dunfell. Um, and we anticipate that with that, octo with that octopus release, the app framework and the IPC evolution will be hardened because we will be back in person for CES 2023. Let's hope, uh, <laughs> let's hope we beat this thing, this COVID thing. Um, but we will be back in person for CES in 2023 with new reference apps that are not based on Q, um, based on Flutter or Wham, uh, we'll see. But um, with this, this process will get us to a hardened, app framework and an IPC. We will have uh, SE Linux available in a non-permissive mode. We are, AGL is looking for a donation of rules. Uh, as anybody who's configured SE Linux knows, the rules can be quite complex. And so if somebody has a set of rules they'd like to donate, or if somebody would like, um, like to work on a set of rules, we are happy to listen. So talk to me, talk to Jan Simon, um, and we can make this happen. And we're anticipating that our instrument cluster will be production ready by the optimistic opt octopus release in February of 23. So this will be very exciting. So like I said, 2022 will be a year of transition and transformation for AGL, but we will have a production ready instrument cluster and we will be closing in on a production ready IVI system with a hardened app framework and IPC and new reference apps. So here's the schedule for Optimistic Octopus with uh, an initial release of initial milestone one of in December of next year and a final release in February of 23. So to uh, summarize, AGL will evolve to embrace more of the best of open source, take more advantage of upstream, work more with uh, existing communities to extend automotive use cases. That includes Yocto and Open Embedded. Um, Yocto, we, where we have a, we have an advisory board seat on Yocto. We work very closely with Open Embedded. We will continue to replace the app framework with system D and other mature technologies wherever possible. Pipewire and Wireplumber, we have driven a lot of use cases into those projects. We'll continue to work with them and continue to, to take their upstream changes. Weston and Wayland communities and Flutter as well. And whatever other communities may come along. There's a lot of cool projects that have been announced recently or been released and we are willing to talk to anybody and accept, you know, if you want to bring some code in, you have a Yocto layer, we are more than happy to accept it and get it into our, get it into AGL. So um, we're a very open project. Um, everything we do is completely in the open. Um, you can see pre past presentations that I've made to introduce AGL where there's a, you know, a large number of meetings and a mailing list that you can contribute to. Uh, and learn how to get your code into AGL and make it part of the reference implementation. Um, so, you know, as we as we continue through the the next part of the decade, um, we see new socks, new system on chips that are being announced that continue to grow, more cheaper, more powerful. Um, really just crazy amounts of, of, of processing and computing power available in the mobile and automotive space. Um, high speed connectivity becomes ubiquitous. And really we're thinking, we're hearing from OEMs 
that, you know, the, having the ability to rearrange functionality within the vehicle, moving some functionality to the cloud, um, all of that is possible and all that's being worked on by various groups within the AGL community. So in particular, the virtualization expert group, the containerization, the container and service mesh expert group and the vehicle to cloud expert groups are really tackling this. Um, I don't, you know, we have a, a, a large variety, a large number of expert groups that meet on a regular basis if you go to our wiki page, you will see that each of these expert groups meets every two weeks. You're free to join any of these expert groups and find out what's going on and figure out how you can contribute or learn what you can. I like to say, um, you don't need to be an expert to participate in an expert group. Um, Think of it as a working group. Think of it as a, a group of like-minded people who are trying to make progress on the project. So this week during Automotive Linux Summit, we have a, a, a number of other sessions that are dedicated to learning what is going on within the AGL expert groups. So uh, today on Tuesday, after this presentation, IVI and Flutter will be a presentation. Uh, reference hardware, we will have a presentation from Toyota, from uh, Tanamorasan. Uh, virtualization, you'll get an expert, you'll get a, a, an update from the expert group, as well as some demos from uh, ARM and from um, Open Synergy. Um, instrument cluster, uh, Yamaguchi-san will have an update on what the instrument cluster expert group has been doing and how they're getting toward moving towards uh, production readiness and their multi-container solution. Um, Hayden Peterswald from Amazon uh, Web Services will have an update on our containers and mesh expert group. And then uh, tomorrow, we'll have an update from our application framework expert group from Arno to find out what he's been working on and how we're going to continue to evolve the application framework and replace it with more upstream components. Um, vehicle to Cloud, Richard from uh, Amazon will be talking about that. Jan Simon Muller, the AGL release manager, will talk about CI and testing. And then Lorenzo will talk about Flutter apps and what Egalia has been working on in conjunction with Toyota to make Flutter apps available. I believe either in his presentation or in the Toyota presentation, we'll see a demo of what they've been working on. So there's some of these presentations will have demos, a uh, lot of good information on what's going on in each of the expert groups. So, that's it for my presentation. If you have any questions, uh, please drop it in the Q&A box or, and I will try to answer them. Otherwise, uh, have a good show. Um, enjoy Automotive Linux Summit. And I really, I hope to see you all in person in 2022. Thank you.